I'm curious, David, from your perspective, like what kind of players do you try and model your game after? And, and, you know, are there guys that you feel like you compare favorably to? Uh, being a bigger guy, I guess in high school, a bigger guy, I probably won't be that big in college, but Josh Allen is one of the, like, I really like to watch him. He's just the throws he makes is insane. Like the way he just can twist his body and throw the opposite way where his body's going. I, I work on stuff that he does. And I like a little Trevor Lawrence, you know, in college when he would do the quarterback power. We're going to do a little bit of that this year. Sure. Um, just seeing like, just being like that big guy that's physical, go make plays, but also can just kill you with his arm. And that's what I feel like I can do. This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. Hello and welcome to our kickoff of Verbal Commitment on the KC Sports Network, brought to you by Home Field Apparel. I'm Kevin Flaherty, and I'm here with Ryan Wallace from GoPowerCat.com and 24-7 Sports. Let's talk about the world of local recruiting, from Kansas and Kansas City prospects to the college classes at Kansas, Kansas State, and Missouri. Uh, this is a passion project for the two of us. Ryan and I, we work together at 24-7 Sports. We spent a lot of time on the road throughout the state of Kansas, across Kansas City, uh, seeing prospects, getting to tell their stories, and we want to tell those stories to you guys and, and help you get to know both the games of the people who are coming to your favorite schools, but also you know some of the stories behind some of these guys. Ryan, how are you doing? I'm doing well, and like you said, Kevin, uh, this is an exciting time for us. Um, you know, as you mentioned, kind of traveling across the state of Kansas. Uh, you know, you covering the Jayhawks mainly and me covering the Wildcats, you start to learn that uh, there's a there's a heavy infatuation with not only the state of Kansas, but just local recruiting, whether it be in Kansas City, Kansas City Mo, uh, all the way into Missouri, sometimes even stretching into St. Louis. There's a lot of chatter, right, about, yeah. you know, have you seen this kid? Have you seen this team? And we started kind of putting our minds together and going, Jayhawk fans would love it. K State fans would love it. Let's add the Missouri Tigers to the mix. We might be onto something here, and and to have you know a, a network like the KCSN behind this, um, it's going to be pretty exciting. We're we're looking forward to sharing some journeys, and again, trying to play fair on all sides. <laughs> Later in the show, we're going to talk to David McComb, Kansas's quarterback commitment in the twenty twenty five class. Uh, a player that I, I've kind of been on the the Twitter rails about maybe being a little bit underrated uh he's really impressed me with his accuracy and athleticism if you like what you hear subscribe you know hit that like button or leave us a five-star review on apple Podcasts or spotify but before we get to david mccall let's talk about the jayhawks 2025 class and, and ryan i'd actually like to start with a guy who's not one of the top couple guys at least by rating but he's somebody that i know you saw in person at k-state camp uh one we got after getting Deshaun Warner and Dak Brinkley and adding by Job in the transfer portal, Kansas is bringing in Arizona edge Garrett Martin. I know this is a guy you're really high on. I, I raved about him at, at Case its offensive line camp, uh, offensive line and defensive line camp. And again, you know, Kevin, you actually attended the one this year with me. And so, you know, can yeah. you fans listening, uh, let, let me give some, some background here. You know, I, I think that there's a lot of respect that goes into K-State's offensive line and defensive line camps because of what Connor Riley, the offensive line coach, has put on paper in terms of how he develops. And so you get a lot of offensive linemen that want to go to that camp. And likewise, I think that there's some interest and intrigue for defensive linemen to attend that camp to try and prove themselves against pretty good competition. I would e equal it to like if KU ever had like a quarterback or maybe a running back camp, right? You know, I mean, People know that that's the pedigree of, of that program. Garrett Martin shows up to Manhattan, Kansas last year uh, without you know a lot of fanfare and, and offers at that time and was a one-man wrecking crew, uh, just pure power, always the aggressor. I think right now uh, in 247 Sports on the composite, we have him at number nine in the, his home state of Arizona. I think he should be closer to the top five, if not in the top five, just based on that one night that I've I watched and having come through a little bit more of his film, he he's going to be the desert disruptor, Kevin. I think in Lawrence, I, I just think he's a great fit, and I think he's a guy that um, you mentioned it. He's you know court, towards the middle of the pack in this in this commitment class, but uh, wildly impressed with him. Look forward to watching his career in Lawrence. 
Yeah, and I'd probably have him up there a little bit higher if you were having me rank the the Kansas class out. One of the things Kansas has done really well, I feel like, over the last couple classes, they've got the quarterbacks that they've wanted when you look at, at Zeke Marshall and, and now David McComb, and they've gotten guys who make quarterbacks uncomfortable when, when you look at Warner, when you look at, uh, at Brinkley, and now Garrett Martin. Ryan, what from the outside? Like, what what do you think of this class? What what's something that maybe stands out to you a little bit? Well, I was impressed, you know, off the hoof at the fact that there's eight different states already featured uh, in a class of only fourteen guys, and, and not just the amount of states, but particularly a couple uh, singular ones, states like Arizona, uh, Florida, Georgia that have multiple guys in this class. I mean, talent-rich recruiting beds that Kansas is going in and maybe not finding you know, the highest-rated recruits from there, but getting some guys that I thought uh, fit what they like to do and are kind of under the radar. You know, Just like K-State, I think Lance Leipold has already proven in his short time that this is going to be a developmental roster, but they're going to go out and evaluate the heck out of players and, and find some, some hidden gems there. And Kevin, when I was going through the film, three guys that stood out for me that I hadn't really seen much of before that I was like, okay, there, there's something here. Darian Jones popped off right away. Obviously, uh, an ideal kind of plays that press man corner out of Florida, but it sounds like he might play more safety for KU. I, I know there were some grade concerns, but uh, and that's why some of his supreme offers like Florida, uh, Florida State, I think Ohio State, Miami might have been in there. It sounds like that's maybe why they dropped off. So as long as his academics hold, man, he looks like he's going to just continue what we've seen in Lawrence uh, lately in the secondary. Joseph Skipworth, Kevin, was another guy that I really liked out of Florida. 6'5", maybe not, you know, this incredible athlete, but yet at the same time, he's running away from guys in a state like Florida. So you know he's got some wheels there, and I I see him pairing really nicely with Carson Brune, uh, another uh, underclassman in Lawrence, and, and I think they're set for the future at tight end with those two. And the last guy, Kevin, before I pitch pitch it back to you, that I really was impressed by is towards the bottom of this class, Jackson Cook out of yep. Georgia, the wide receiver, slippery player. I, I mean, he can find the smallest seam in, in a defensive scheme and just torch it. He can really turn on the burners. I think we list him in his profile as an 11-3-3 guy in the 100 meters, Kevin, but he plays faster on film, and I'll be interested to see you know, how a guy like David McComb can get him incorporated into future offenses. Yeah, I really like you. You hate to call it the bottom of, of the class, but from a ranking standpoint, I, I do really like the depth of this class. Josiah Hammond out of Tulsa Union is a guy that I really like, I think. He profiles similarly to DJ Withers, who yeah. you know is going to start at defensive tackle for Kansas this year. Uh, I, I think when you when you look at the the decisions they're making in state, I think are really interesting too. You know, obviously the one that's very widely panned is, is them taking Juju Marks. Uh, you know, offering Tate Nagy after camp, Brandon Schmelzley, an eight man guy who's got a lot of athletic stuff. Uh, with Juju, I think it's a really interesting case because I, I think it's very similar in a lot of ways to a guy that you and I have talked a lot about in Dominique Orange. And Dominique yeah. Orange was a guy, for those of you who don't know, from North Kansas City, wound up getting all kinds of offers. I mean, Georgia, all kinds of people after his sophomore year. The junior year maybe didn't go according to plan by the time he made his decision. Really didn't have as many committable offers as what his offer sheet would have shown. Iowa State and Kansas were two of the last schools in there, you know, kind of saying, hey, we'll we'll take a swing on the talent, see what it is. Iowa State gets him. He's looking like a potential All-Big 12 player now at Iowa State. Things work yeah. out as far as that went. And with Juju, similar situation, right? After the sophomore year, uh, you see – Basically, all these offers come in, people enamored with his size, with the athletic ability, with the length, all the different things. Junior year, a little different from Dominique Orange in that you did have a position switch, but at the same time, maybe it didn't go quite according to plan. But Ryan, these are guys that it makes a lot of sense sometimes to swing on, because if they do hit, 
if you are able to bring them into your culture and your system and it does work out, you're able to get a player who was, you know, the USC at one point thought right. was good enough to play there that all these different other people thought was good enough to play there. Well, and I mean, Kansas needed uh, a bigger name in state to, you know, again, kind of carry the torch, if you will, a little bit. Because, sure. again, you know, they pick up a guy like Leighton Cure, and then they do well with guys like Schmelzley and, and Nagy. Uh, and I think the PWOs have really improved under Lance Leipold. But, you know, outside of what, Cla- Calvin Clements and Jaden Ham, there hasn't been anybody else in state that they can really kind of, uh, you know, wave that flag a little bit, so to speak. And and so I'm with you. I think the dice roll makes st- sense for Juju Marks because clearly the the ability is there. Even if, you know, the, the, the past season, the junior season at Aquinas maybe wasn't quite what he wanted and, and maybe led a little bit uh, to the transfer to Olathe South, which we're all intrigued to watch this fall. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing that I've told you makes sense about rolling the dice with Juju Marks are the connections that he has. He's a, a pretty well-known guy around the Metro from his uh, talents as a basketball player and playing AAU kind of before his football career kicked off. He knows a lot of guys on both sides of the state line. And so, again, if he's a guy that you can tap into, if he's a guy that Lance Leipold and that staff can kind of squeeze out the the talent that's that's there, right, and get the most out of him, keep him on campus, that's a guy that can open up some other avenues to really talented players again in the Kansas City Metro. It it helps a lot when you've got the quarterback that you want to. And, yeah. you know, David McComb being a guy, you know, I've lobbied for him to be a four star player. He he has gotten a bump in the rankings, you know, from where he started. Still not quite up where I think he should be. But Ryan, I've I've been really impressed. He's a better athlete than you think. He tested it as the Much best better. athlete at the Elite 11 regional that he went to. But I'm really impressed with how maturely he throws the ball, how well he layers his throws. He's a guy that can hit all of the different things. Ian Primer, a guy I'm sure we're going to have on the show at, at some point. You know, there was a throw at KU's camp this year where, you know, he threw a back shoulder throw and really got a, a lot of RPMs on it and put it where only Primer could, could make a play on it. I think he does a really nice job of, of getting the ball into the holes of the defense, you know, layering it over linebackers before the safeties, all the different things, and and, and we're uh, we're we're very interested to to talk to hear him here in a minute. We're going to talk to Kansas quarterback commitment David McComb here in just a minute, but first we need to tell you about our friends at Homefield Apparel. Homefield has more than 150 colleges and growing. To choose from, from Kansas, Kansas State, Missouri, to the banana slugs of UC Santa Cruz. There are more than 50 items for Kansas fans to enjoy. Our show producer, Nick Springer, loves his Kansas Relay shirt. And personally, I've got my eyes on a 1995 Aloha Bowl number. So check out homefieldapparel.com and use the promo code PAYHEED24 for 15% off your first order. And we'll be right back. We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest-ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com Welcome back to the Verbal Commitment Podcast brought to you by Homefield Apparel. We're here now with David McCull, quarterback at Oklahoma's Edmund Memorial, who committed to the Jayhawks almost a full year ago, even before KU's 9-win 2023 season. David, thanks again for stopping by. Yeah. You committed so early that the second commit in the class didn't come in until more than five months later. First off, were you lonely being in the class by now? <laughs> and secondly, you know, what was it about Kansas that, that kind of got you to, to make your pledge that early? Uh, I, I knew I wasn't early in the beginning. I knew I was early, so I knew like there'd be guys that take uh, unofficials and kind of go on that stuff and see what they would like. So I didn't expect anybody to just, I didn't expect like 10 commits in July or anything, but it was actually before dead period, before like the open communication period, I think I committed. No. It was like, I couldn't, I didn't announce it or something like, I don't know. It was something crazy, but um what was your second question? I just oh, sorry. You're still yeah, like, yeah, well, what what was it about KU that that um, want to pull that trigger? 
Yeah, I had three things going into my visits. I kind of think of the tour of Virginia Tech and all that. And it was proximity to home uh, scheme in my relationship with the coaches. And I felt Coach G was the one I talked to the most. The one I kind of like felt like I clicked with him the most. Like we both love football. We're both like super passionate about it. And his excitement about it really got me excited. Uh, felt like I fit the scheme of the offense too. Like a quarterback that can throw it, but also can run it. Um, it's going to like the way they do long play, like long play calls. And that's going to develop, develop me for the next level. I want to be, I want to give freedom, like to do pass direction and all that. So I can have that in NFL and then close to home. I want to be back like Paris sometimes I want them to come watch me play so having such a long-standing relationship with coach Zabrowski coach Leipold uh you probably are privy to stuff that the average fan wouldn't be privy to what's something that you know the the average Jayhawk fan might not know about either one of those guys is there anything that uh, any funny stories or stuff that again that you wouldn't see from their demeanor on Saturday? Coach Leipold is pretty business like all the time. He will make some jokes, but you know how he is. He's really business business like on the OV, all that stuff. But Coach Z, I mean, I mean, you can probably see, you can see I see him on the sideline on the TV, and I can like that. Yeah, that's it. He's not he's not fake. He's all the time. He's gonna be himself. He's real, and I mean, he's he's a really good golfer. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to get advice from him. He's like golfing under 80s, and I just I can't get it. So uh, that's 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 something about him that most people don't know. That's funny because he does have that personality a little bit of like a golf pro. Like if you go somewhere, (laughs) you know, sort of like grip it and rip it. Yeah. You know, type of stuff. That's what he says. Yeah. Yeah. It's, is he, when you talk to him, like on a regular basis or whatever, like what do you guys talk about? I mean, life's football plays. Like he came in and helped my OC install a couple plays that we're going to install for week one. So. We talk about that, how we're how we are doing it different than them. Um, I mean, anything we it's just whatever comes up in the time. Like I called him yesterday at like at like nine o'clock at night. We were just we were just chatting on FaceTime. So it's it's pretty it's anything we talk about, we're it's, we're pretty close. So speaking of, of coaches, uh one of your high school coaches is actually your dad, Kyle. Yeah. Uh, he's he's Edmund Memorial's uh co D C D ends, I think. And I know he does some strength and conditioning stuff on the side. So a two-part question for me would be, what's it like at practice every day, kind of just ruining your dad's spirit and the defense (laughs) as the quarterback? And two, uh, what do you feel like he's taught you most from a physical development standpoint in in the weight room? Yeah, the weight room is definitely the most important thing, like being an athlete. You have to be able to lift heavy. And I feel like I push myself in that. I'm not as strong as I was in the offseason, but... I feel like I'm as mobile and fast, and I've learned a lot from him starting at such a young age. Like, it hasn't hurt me at all to lift heavy weights. It's actually benefited me a lot. I feel like I'm always ahead of the curve because of him. And um, at at practice, I mean, he, he gets a little mad sometimes. They, they blow the whistle a little early too. If I take one move out of the pocket, they're blowing the whistle. So <laughs> they don't, well, they don't want to get embarrassed all the time. I have to make a lot of on pocket throws in the pocket throws. So he gets it. He gets uh, cool. My little brother gets a couple. Uh, Good, good plays on me every once in a while too. What's what's your relationship been like with with Coach Grimes, with him coming in to be the offensive coordinator and everything? I know you talked with him a little bit. It, it seemed like at camp when you yeah. came up over the summer, and you know what what's that been like? Has he told you sort of, hey, the offense is going to be the same as it has been? Hey, here are some tweaks that we're thinking. You know what's that what's that been like? Well, I talked to Coach Z about it when they were hiring him, and he's like, we're bringing a really good guy, and they're going to keep the same offense, but it just add on little things that could help. It's just getting another eyes, another mind on the offense and seeing what they can do to improve on the areas they struggled. I talked to him. I don't talk to him as much as I talk to Coach Z, but on the OB, he, he's a super like happy guy, really good with family and talking to parents and stuff like that. So I enjoyed seeing that side of him, and I'm excited to see what he does this year. Being an early commit, did you still, and, and maybe you still do, have teams that, that were trying to hit you up or still trying to hit you up about maybe rethinking your commitment, or have you kind of shut the phone off and told everybody, I, I'm locked up? I've shut the phone off. Schools have come by, and schools have called, and I don't want to be like, I don't want to like say any school to call anybody out, but there's there's schools that have been calling me, and I don't, I don't like it just ignore them i'll just i, I kind of send them the same text it's like a copy pasted like yeah. hey i'm committed 
on that first day of uh, open contact, I did that because I had, I mean, your phone blows up for the first day because it's officially like legal now, I guess. And I just copy pasted it. And I, I don't want to be like, I don't want to ghost anybody because you never go down the road, like even pro, like their coaches can make it up. So I was trying to be as polite as possible, but I am 100% committed. You, you had a big year last year, obviously. Mm-hmm. But when people see you this year, where are they going to notice improvement? Like, what have you been working on to to kind of take your game to the next step? Um, oh, I feel like last year it was a lot of making plays by myself, like trying to scramble out. We had a young old line, and they sometimes didn't pick up the right the right guys, and I had to make a play. And they saw a lot of that last year in my film, but now it's me in the pocket making being accurate and taking what the defense gives me and hitting hitting little arrows little fly routes and hitches and just trying to drive down the field and be a game manager instead of trying to be a big playmaker and always taking the shot now watching your your tape from your junior year as kevin said you become evan memorial's all-time passing leader mm-hmm. um and i start to try and think of, of comps for you right and I see a little bit of that todd reesing loxie to you you know a name that you're probably already growing very familiar with uh, but another comp, and again, you're you're a San Diego transplant to Oklahoma, so this yeah. big, this Big Twelve comp that I have from past years uh, might be a little over your head. But I, I saw <laughs> some I saw some Trevor Knight in you uh, when I was watching tape. But I'm curious, David, from your perspective, like what kind of players do you try and model your game after? And and you know, are there guys that you feel like you compare favorably to? Uh. Being a bigger guy, I guess in high school, a bigger guy, I probably won't be that big in college. But Josh Allen is one of the, like I really like to watch him. He's just the throws he makes is insane. Like the way he just can twist his body and throw the opposite way where his body's going. I, I work on stuff that he does, and I like a little Trevor Lawrence. You know, in college, when he would do the quarterback power, we're gonna do a little bit of that this year. Sure. Um, just seeing like just being like that big guy that's physical, go make plays, but also can just kill you with his arm, and that's what I feel like I can do. What role have you played kind of in recruiting this class since you did, you know, you were the first guy in it and everything else. I know they match up different weekend stuff at, at the camp that, that you were at. You know, it, it seemed like the coaches kind of had you talking to Ian Primer yeah. there and, and everything else. What What is your role with that? And it, is there anybody that you're still kind of nudging maybe to try, try and get in this class? Yeah, I, I I mean, when I first committed, I was all over social media, reposting, DMing guys, and it's it was it was like it was cool. Like I I, I want people to see what I see of uh, Kansas and see the program, the future, and all that. But I was talking to Ian in camp, and mostly because he was an easy target to throw one on ones to, and I was like, no, oh, come on, come on, me, bro, come on with me. <laughs> but um, I don't, we don't, we're kind of like no no coaches have told me who were targeting right now 25 class is kind of winding down a little bit so it's been kind of nice to just to stay off the phone a little bit kind of stay with my high school do some workouts and all that so that's what i've been doing were there any particular commitments uh, of the 14 of you that that are committed that you felt maybe particularly directly involved with uh, or felt like you had a, a pretty strong hand in in maybe luring them to to be part of this family um i feel like joe skipworth was a big one on the OV, me and Anderson were hanging out with him all kind of, and Anderson even, I was talking to him for a while before he committed. I kind of, I had a feeling that he was going to come here with his dad being there and everything, but I just like to talk to him and make sure he knew that, knew that he was loved here and that he would fit in and all that. So those are two guys that I really like. You talked about wanting people to see the sort of the Kansas of the future. Let's talk about the Kansas of the present. Yeah. What what's what's your prediction for for what the Jayhawks are are going to do this year? Because you you've been around these guys for a little while now. You you've been to practice. You've seen them. What? How do you think they'll do? Well, I see them doing really really well. Like big com- competing for Big Twelve championships, college football playoffs. Like I don't I don't see a like why not? Like they're a really good team all around. They have a lot of guys coming back. Yeah, like the people question Jalen being hurt. I don't see that as a problem because Cole played really well yesterday last year as a true freshman, like walk on red shirt. It's, it, it's just really, I can see them competing and I don't, I mean, I'm excited for what that's going to help the future of it. Uh, football aside, I'm curious. So uh, what really drew you most to, to uh, life in Lawrence, right? What, what you've been up there enough. Now you kind of have a lay yeah. of the land. I mean, what excites you about being a student and kind of a resident in that community? 
Uh, I don't know. I it's it's definitely pretty pretty campus. I I like that, but I mean, I'm I committed to, for the coaches. I committed to play football. Like I, I'm all in with campus football. I, <laughs> the the live, the live the live stuff is cool and all that, but I'm I'm here for football. Kevin, he's gonna live in the complex. So that's basically what that is. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Where where's the best food? It's right the trading table. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, it's uh, with you. Speaking of the complex, KU is is getting ready to kind of unveil new stadium, mm-hmm. um, you know, new football complex, and all those things. Obviously, you see the the artist renderings and everything. W- what are your thoughts on, on all of that? It's super exciting. Uh, I'll be, I think it's finished. I get there in January and yeah. it'll be finished in August. This, the home side of the stadium, or I don't know what it, I don't know what it's called, but I'm excited to see it. It's, it's going to get it. going to be upgraded. It's going to look a lot bigger. I saw the construction when we were there and seeing the locker room and seeing the weight room and what they've done is super exciting. It's just see the vision of the future. It's okay. crazy how fast they're building that thing. I know it's insane. This you know this spring there wasn't much there and and all yeah of a sudden, it's uh it's up to well yeah. yeah I I had a random question for you David uh, mm. throughout your visits um you know I I'm not sure if you've ever rubbed shoulders or had a chance to talk with with Coach Self uh are you familiar with the fact that you guys share an alma mater at Edmund Memorial I didn't know that until after I committed. One of my coaches told me that, and I thought that was pretty cool. I, I never got to talk to him. He's, I mean, he's a big time guy. It's, once I get there, maybe I'll get a chance, but he, he's uh, probably busy recruiting basketball kids and holding practice and stuff. But watching a game was really cool. I went, when I went in December, it was really cool to watch them play. And Allen Fieldhouse is great. Who did you see him play? Oh, you. So I got to brag to all my uh, Oklahoma fans in, in Oklahoma that we won. So. Some friendly banter in the future, yeah, Kevin, or David versus uh, Bill of, of who's the bigger Edmund Memorial. <laughs> I don't know. It's gonna be hard to pass him up. It's gonna be pretty hard to pass him up. Well, thank you so much for uh, for joining hey, us. Kevin, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, 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 you got rapid fire, don't we? We got rapid fire. We're not right. letting him out. Off. All right, that, that's that's my mistake. That's my mistake. <laughs> All, right. All right, we we always finish with some quick hitters. Uh, okay, so let, let's do it. This one, I love starting with this one. Favorite Kansas uniform combination? You've got lots to choose from. All black, no doubt. All black. All black. Lick and yeah. like that. Do you have an opponent uh, that you already have circled on Edmonds' uh, calendar for this fall? Edmond North, the rival. We lost last year, and that was a bad loss. We should have <laughs> never lose to those guys ever again. So, Obviously, you're a committed Jayhawk uh, for now and Jayhawk for the future, but if you had to pick Sooners or Cowboys... I don't even know. I'm not pro on the list. I don't know. I don't like either. There you I, go. I've got bad blood with both. There you go. Um, okay, so how about going back to California a little bit? Are you more Chargers or more Rams? Chargers. I got my papa was a Chargers fan. They left us anyways. We were from San Diego, so they they left us, and we kind of hate them, but we still love them. Justin yeah. Herbert, got gotta love them. How about in basketball, Clippers, Lakers, or are you a Thunder guy now? Uh, I don't know. I didn't really watch basketball. I, I, I like Clippers. I like the Clippers. When I was played 2K, how I play the Clippers. There you go. Uh, how about when you're not training for sports? Uh, what What do you think Jayhawk fans can find you doing? Golf course. Try to get better at that. Oh, I, that's I, right. You get to go, but I like the fish too. Bass, catfish, pretty fun. How about one more? This is a this is another fun one. It's on my mind because I I don't know if you're into Netflix, but I, I started watching the Receiver Show. Mm. Um, so this is a tough one. I, I, did, I wanted to stray away from just the whole start bench cut. So how about this from a quarterback's perspective, yeah. you can have your number one read, your second read, your bench player practice squad cut between Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Justin Jefferson, Amon Ross St. Brown and Devonte Adams. Ooh. Uh, Devonte Adams on a first read. I think he's the best route runner in the NFL. George Kittle can just you can get it down to him. Gets go to your secondary, hit him. Uh, what was the next one? Who's on your bench? Bench, uh, Justin Jefferson. Practice squad. Uh, who's he's got uh, Saint Brown or Debo? Uh, Amadra. Who cutting Debo? Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's my opinion. I like the <laughs> uh, Justin Jefferson at uh, third is uh, going to get a lot of hate too. <laughs> <laughs> I like Devontae Adams. I like it. 
the, the those are good picks. So for real this time, <laughs> thanks uh, th- thanks for joining us for the Verbal Commitment podcast on KCSM, and thanks to all of you for watching. If you like what you've seen or heard, leave us a like, subscribe, leave a five star rating, and until next time, take care.